Hi guys and welcome back to Chef's Choice. Let's talk about the second batch of performances at the Eurovision in concert in Amsterdam, shall we? If you want to hear my impression of all the performances, you find the first video in the playlist up here. And for the next video, just subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. You can find the recordings of all the performances that I'm talking about on the WeWe Blogs channel. Uh, I will put a link in the description below so you can make your own impression. But make sure you come back to this video, okay? Moldova. I said a few times in my previous review videos that I really didn't like this song. I thought it was trying too hard to be funny and I hated the whole performance in the national final. But I have to say after seeing them live it kind of works. At least in this context. I'm still a little, little skeptical about the TV performance in Kiev, but on a small stage like this, stripped back to only the three band members, the song has a lot of power. Also I preferred their outfits this time much more than the bride and groom concept that they had in the national final. I really hope they don't go back to this for Kiev. If they keep it as natural as this time, I'm totally okay with them qualifying to the final. Switzerland. Honestly, I still don't understand why they need the drummer and the piano player on stage. For me, Miruna is captivating enough alone and the band members don't add any visual value to the performance. And I also still think the song is just okay. But everything is solid. She sings well live, she's present, it's catchy. It will neither make me passionately cheer for them, nor will I think it's bad. But it's a good quality pop song and coming between Norway and Belarus towards the end of the second semi-final could be a good place to be noticed. Slovenia. This is one of my favorite songs to sing along to, but there's nothing that makes it current. It's kind of the male equivalent to Malta's Claudia Faniello. There's nothing bad about it, it's just not as exciting as other songs. And I do question the style choice here as well. He's trying to mix a jacket that seems old with chains on the belt and around the neck and a glossy t-shirt and jeans. He can't really make it work together, in my opinion. I like the song, but I still don't think it's a qualifier. San Marino. Talking about strange style choices. <laughs> Valentina Moneta looked like she's having a slumber party with Jimmy Wilson and snuck to her younger sister's closet to grab the tackiest clothes they could find and are having a disco party in her room. I didn't expect much of this performance and I wasn't disappointed. Malta. As I said for Slovenia, this is kind of the female equivalent to Amor Naber. It's such a nice feel-good ballad that goes down like butter, but it lacks the excitement. This might work better on camera, where you get different angles and some motion and the right lighting, but Malta's coming quite early in the second semi-final, so it will be a challenge to stay in people's minds long enough. I'm okay with either outcome. Israel. Damn, he's handsome. There's no doubt he will qualify based on his looks and his position at the very end of the second semi-final. I still think only about half of the song is actually deserving to qualify, but he will fill out the rest with his presence alone. This will be a refreshing end of the show and wakes people up after Estonia's performance to pick up the phones. Azerbaijan. I really don't get the styling concept here at all. Dihash looks like a mix of dress mannequin and cyborg singing about skeletons. With the right staging and show concept the song could work, but I feel like this is heading in a bad direction if, if that's what they are planning. But if Samra qualified last year with a disastrous vocals, then Iha sh shouldn't have a problem, even if the spot between Finland and Portugal is not the best premise. Belarus. Unsurprisingly for me, this was the first act that really managed to perform for the audience and not just for the sake of performing. They are happy, they are awake and they want to sing their song. And the audience was feeling it. Everybody was jumping and clapping and singing along, so I really hope they keep this authenticity in their performance in Kiev. That's what makes them so likable. And it's also a great example of having a coherent styling, because it matches who they are and it matches the song. And that's what many of the other acts didn't show us. And their spontaneous cover of the Common Linette's Calm After the Storm helped of course to get the Dutch audience in Amsterdam on their side. Bulgaria. This is also one of the performances I was looking forward to the most because I was wondering how his stage presence is and to get an impression of what the staging might be like in Kiev. While I'm convinced for the first part, the latter is still very unsure. Christian Kostov is a cute guy and definitely has more star appeal than Brandon Murray from Ireland, who just because of their, their similar age might be comparable. He's probably the stronger contestant out of those two, but he still has to beat Australia for the best male ballot. I'm quite sure Christian will qualify, but I still cannot estimate at all what the staging will look like. The Czech Republic. Oh my gosh, I thought that Albania's Lindita was dressed revealingly, but what Martina Bata was wearing was a little too much, or 
too little. Because under her jacket she wore nothing but a sheer see-through jumpsuit. She has a great body and clearly has nothing to hide, but having her boobs stare at me for three minutes made it kind of hard to focus on the song, especially because it doesn't really correspond to the song at all. At least as far as I understood the lyrics are about taking care of and supporting her spouse, but maybe she meant that not in an emotional way, but more sexually. Well, she won't be allowed to wear that in the live show anyway, but I guess it will be as revealing as possible. For me it's too desperate and I don't think that the song is good enough to begin with to qualify for the final. Austria. I kind of fell in love with Nathan Trent. He's such a cute guy and seems to be a really genuinely nice person. And seeing him on stage is like seeing a puppy looking up at you and you go, oh. I was looking forward to his performance because I was afraid beforehand that he might be too reserved and shy. Obviously he will never bring the same charisma on stage like Francesco Cabani, but he was much better than I thought. I just really hope the second position in this semi-final won't prevent him from getting enough votes, because he deserves to qualify for sure. Denmark. I wasn't sure about this one before the show, but having seen her live, I changed my mind. The energy that Anya brings to the stage is impressive and pulls her much higher on my list despite the mediocre song. I still feel she pushes a little too hard, which ended literally in shouting towards the end of the song. But if they get the sound level right and it'll Kiev, I'm pretty sure this goes to the final. So these were acts 11 to 22 of the 34 acts. So I have another 12 to do in the next video. If you would like to see this as well, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. And tell me in the comments which country you think will be the biggest surprise in Kiev. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.